Welcome to Math Memo. This is 1959 IMO, problem number 6. This is a 3D construction problem with planes P and Q intersecting along a line P. And we're asked to construct an isosceles trapezium ABCD in which a circle can be inscribed with the condition that vertices B and D lie in the planes P and Q respectively. To make sense of this problem, let's have a look in GeoGebra. This is plane P. This plane passes through points A, P1 and P2, which we've given different coordinates and different heights. Here's another point, not on plane P. Let's construct a plane through this point and points P1 and P2. Let's give it a different color, red. And let's not forget to rename this point, point C, which lies on plane Q. So now we have planes P and Q, which are blue and red and points A and C on P and Q, and neither A nor C lies on the straight line P, marked out here by points P1 and P2, which is the line where planes P and Q intersect. And that's the setup of our problem. Our goal is to create a trapezium, A, B, C, D, where A, B is parallel to C, D, and A and B lie on the blue plane P, and C and D lie on the red plane Q. So question one, how can we make sure that A, B and D, C are parallel? We claim that for A, B and D, C to be parallel, both lines must be parallel to the line P. And this is why this must be the case. This is P extended through points P1, P2. Let's construct line AB, not parallel to P, taking care that B lies on the blue plane like so. And this is AB. You can see AB is not parallel to P because they intersect. If we now draw a line through C parallel to AB, watch what happens. Hmm, so the line through C parallel to AB only touches the red plane at point C. Point D would not lie on the red plane. So now we've seen for ourselves that because AB and DC are both coplanar with the line P, then both must be parallel to P for AB and DC to not be skew. With this in mind, let's try again. Let's first draw a line through A parallel to P, taking care that this line lies on the blue plane. And now let's draw a line through C parallel to P, taking care that this line lies on the red plane. And we can rest easy knowing that point P will be somewhere on that line in the blue plane and point D will be somewhere on that line in the red plane. And the four corners of our isosceles trapezium will lie along these two lines parallel to P. Let's leave GeoGebra for now and think about another question, which is how can we make sure that our trapezium can inscribe a circle? Let's consider this trapezium in 2D. Its corners lie on parallel lines AB and DC. A circle is inscribed. Let's draw in the radius to the tangents, like so, and let's let the corners be A, B, C, D. And from each corner, we note that the tangents from an external point to the circle are equal in length. So let's label the segments like so. Let the segments be A, B, C, and D. The trapezium is isosceles, so the non-parallel sides are equal. So side AD is equal to side BC. Small a plus small d equals small b plus small c. And a plus b plus c plus d equals the length of the top plus the length of the base, which is also equal to 2b plus c, which is also equal to 2a plus d. So each side is half of the top plus the bottom. This is the condition that must be satisfied if a circle is to be inscribed within this isosceles trapezium. How are we to go about constructing it? Have a look at this cleaned up isosceles trapezium. Let the top length be x and the bottom length be y. Let this point here be a prime, so a a prime is the perpendicular to cd. Since the two triangles on the wings are congruent, because the trapezium is isosceles, we know that this distance here must be half y minus x. So the length from c to a prime 
so C A prime equals half y minus x plus x, which equals half y minus half x plus x, which equals half y minus half x equals half y plus x equals half top plus base. This should look very familiar because we just found out that each side of the trapezium must have length half top plus base. What does this mean? It means that CA prime is equal to CB. So if we draw a circle at center C with radius CA prime, then point B is going to lie on the intersection of the circle and the line through A. Now that we know what to do, come have a look at this. Here are parallel lines through A and C, and don't forget that when we first start, we're only given point A and C. We have to find B and D for ourselves. We know that if we drop a perpendicular from A to A prime like so, and draw a circle at C with C A prime as the radius, then the points of intersection of this circle with the line through A are the points for B. So here we have two possible solutions in this case. Let's call them B1 and B2. Now where is D? The trapezium is isosceles, so AD is equal to CB. So let's use the same radius and now draw a circle with A at the center. The points of intersection of this circle and the line through C are the points for D. Since these are meant to be trapeziums, so D2 should correspond to B2 and D1 should correspond to B1, like so. Join them up, and here they are, the two trapeziums in colour, so they're easy to see. Before we move on to see this in 3D, we should make one more comment. We know that a circle can intersect a line two, one, or zero times. Here each circle intersects the corresponding line twice, giving us two possible solutions for B and D, so two trapeziums. If we move the lines through A and C further apart until each circle only intersects the other line just once, then for each circle and line there is only one solution, that is one point of intersection. And you can play around yourself to see that it'll give us a very special trapezium, which is a square. If we move these lines even further apart until the circles don't touch the other corresponding line at all, then we'll have no solutions at all. And we can have a look at all of this in 3D. Here's our setup from before. Let's drop a perpendicular to the line through C from A to A prime. Let's create a sphere centered at C with C A prime as radius. Hmm. And we see that this sphere doesn't touch the line through A at all. So this is a scenario with zero intersections between the circle and line. And so there are no solutions, no possible trapeziums at all. Let's move our lines a bit closer and let's change this ball to green so it's clearer. And we can see that this sphere touches the A line at two different places, B1 and B2. And if we create the same sphere centered at A, then by looking at the points of intersection of that sphere with the line through C, we'll be able to find D. And very carefully, let's adjust so that there's only one point of intersection between the sphere and line, like so so that this point where the green ball touches the A line is B and A, B, C, D. If you draw in another sphere with the same radius centered at A, touching the line through C at D, A, B, C, D is going to be a square. All these spheres are quite confusing, so let's go back to 2D to touch base one last time. So here's where we left off. But wait, you might say, I thought the circle is supposed to be inscribed in the trapezium, not just randomly floating around. And yes, you're right. Have a look. Let's zoom in on the trapezium A, B2, C, D2. The midpoint of A, B2 is E. Drop that down as a perpendicular to F. E, F is the diameter of an inscribed circle. The midpoint of E, F is G. And so the circle looks like this. There, it fits nice and snug. Of course it does. And that's the end of this memo.